Good afternoon. This is the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority. This is our annual board meeting. It's Monday, January 8th, and the time is exactly 3.30. I call that meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Davis, do you have any letters of communication to the board? No, sir. <coughs> okay, that's good. Moving on. We have approval of the minutes on December 28th. So moved to approve those that submitted. Okay, thank you. Second. Second. Any further questions and comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we accepted those minutes. Uh, next, we have an election of officers at this meeting. Um, Megan, do you have a slate? I believe that we're just maintaining the current slate. Yes. Okay. That acceptable to everybody? Okay. Uh, but thank you for your support. Yeah, it's been a uh, interesting year again as I, I sit here at this thing representing the, the people here on, on our board. Um, I think what I do is maintain the continuity. Of, um, I'd like to maintain Mr. Uh, Burns and Mr. Uh, Loeffler on, on the airport and the port committees and I'll address the other committees as we go forward. Uh, gentlemen, you've done a fabulous job this past year and I appreciate the hard work you've done behind the scenes that people don't understand that and how you reached out and uh, makes things happen. So I, I do appreciate that, and so does everybody else. Um, Mr. Kaufman, I'll talk to you about other committees and things like that, whatever. We'll kind of go from there. So, so as we go down, uh, Vice Chair is Mr. Loeffler, Secretary Megan, Treasurer. Who is our Treasurer? Well, we only had Sounds like Mr. Coffin. <laughs> Treasurer? I'd like to look at what the duties are, but okay. uh, I, I'm sure that I'm going to okay. gain the need to find Sam, you're assistant uh, or er, secretary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Doug, I want you to be assistant treasurer. Okay, vice chair. He's vice chair. But you're going to name the other Sam. Huh? You're be secretary and treasurer. I'm assistant secretary. I'm assistant secretary, assistant treasurer. Can he be both? Yeah. He okay. can, he's just, he's not the primary. Okay. He can be both. All right. Well, we, Sam, you okay with that? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Frank. I didn't say be treasurer in this yeah. thing. <laughs> um, you know, here, here's what we said. We have five five members. And as, as we look, and I've said this before on camera, and I'll say it again, we need two more board members or one board better than uh, one gentleman has a difficulty with his scheduling and uh, he's a valuable asset to the board but when you work and have a scheduling that he has it makes it extremely difficult to here attend these meetings so, so we don't want to lose him <laughs> we don't want to lose him but that's, uh, that's part of our situation we have um, executive director <coughs> Um, actually, there's an administrative part, uh, administrative problem here. The executive director and chief financial officer should not be included under the election of officers section. Okay. Uh, well, they belong solely under designation of staff. Okay, so we're just okay. Sorry about that. Okay. I was going to do it twice, wasn't it? <laughs> I was going to do it twice. Uh, designation staff, executive director. Do we need uh, uh, a motion for the election of officers or? Uh, I, 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 think, I, think, I, I think you're know. right. I think you're right. I think we need to make a. Uh, we should. Um, they've been nominated by the committee. The nominated did, by the committee. Did I, is there a second? I seconded. Second. 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 So you can move the whole slate. As presented by. As presented by committee. That's I'll, okay. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burns. A second. Second. Uh, clerk, call the roll on this one, please. Mr. Lamacha. Yes. Mr. Laughlin? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Thank you, Megan. And now, uh, thank you for that correction. The designation of staff. Can I designate somebody else or do I have to designate you? I mean, I mean, anybody else here want to? <laughs> um, obviously, I'd like to put forth Mr. Davis as executive director to continue on. Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Smith. I'll second. Second that. Call any more questions, comments? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for 
the Empire Authority. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Lothar? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Aye. Mr. Burns? Yes. yes. Ms. Whitney? Yes. Mr. Lamacha? Yes. <laughs> Now I looked in the minutes and I saw some eyes there, and eyes and nays. I'm going, oh, <laughs> we got everything going on here. Okay, okay, moving forward. Uh, other appointments, council. Uh, for council, there is um, Frank Capello of Capello Lemon and uh, Lattice Law Firm, Gowling Lafleur Henderson, uh, and Costello Cooney and Fairman. Hold that. One second. Does that cover um, specialized lawyers also that we may need on a needed basis? Or that yeah, should be not listed all? If we need them, we can bring them before the board. From the board. Okay. So that's, um, that's, that's what you. You bring up a good point, though. Uh, Frank Capello is their uh, general counsel outside. Uh, the Lattice Law Firm, uh, Financial Matters. Gowling Lafleur Henderson, uh, these folks are, are Canadian attorneys. Uh, that you see or hear from time to time, and Costello, Cooney, and Fearon are um, the uh, attorneys that we use at the port. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Alonso? Yes. Mr. Laughlin? Yes. Newspapers? Watertown Daily Times. The only game in town. Only game in town. Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's our North Country has dissolved itself in, in the media world. And, I mean, the Watertown Times is an excellent newspaper, and they uh, provide great coverage for all areas. So, poor Augensburg has gone away. Gone away. Is the Pacific Courier still? There's Courier still there. Two days a week. Potsdam yeah. has their. They're, they're yeah, opposite it's days now, I think. Yeah. Cena does two days and Potsdam does two different days. They just cut back with them because the, the advance cut back. So <coughs> that was part of the cutbacks, I think, was going. They're still doing it. Days. It's still all week. You can get a newspaper, but yeah. you just got to get a different newspaper. I mean, my only, my, my only concern, uh, you know, before I make a motion or whatever, well, I can, I'll make a comment after the motion. I'll, I'll move it. Second. Second. Uh, any comments? Further comments? I think my comment is everybody shares the same thing, whatever. As we look out here and we have all these meetings and we have some important issues and things that we discuss, and there's no newspaper here. And it's difficult to get the facts unless you're here to hear all the dialogue and do all the th things, whatever. So, well, uh, I'll tell you the problem I see of it is that we get inundated with requests uh, under the Freedom Information Act that if somebody was sitting in the audience, they might be able to get and ask the question while they're here instead of making us run around and spend valuable time with a staff that's not, come, not overly populated or underworked by any stretch of imagination coming up with data for them. When they can be here and ask the questions, we can prepare in advance. Yeah. That's all. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Lamacha? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. The problem with not having a newspaper is you have to have one anyway, yeah. regardless. The state requires you to have a official newspaper. Next up would be banks, uh, Community Bank, uh, NA, MT Bank, also known as Wilmington Trust, Bank of America, Key Bank, Tompkins Trust, and other full service commercial institutions. So moved. Second. Megan, second. <laughs> Who Where's stole that? Megan. 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 Get some of them buzzers like that. have that temperature there. Right? <laughs> By naming those, uh, Wayne, does that give us freedom to work with all those banks in certain areas' capacities? Or, well, anything we do on a financial basis needs to go out to competitive uh, proposals. So, I mean. So, what we're doing, we're using, I know we're using all these services. This is these who banks. we have existing banking relationships with. Yeah, that's, that's all honest. Okay. Good call, Ms. Whitten? Yes. 
Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. That passes. Okay, any reports, presentations, anything? Financial report? No, mm -hmm. sure. Okay, we have a copy of the uh, <coughs> balance sheet through November 30th in front of you. Um, uh, November was unspectacular, I guess I would say, preface. Um, and I know most of you have not had an opportunity to uh, see these yet, so they were handed out at today's meeting. Um, highlights for November include uh, the almost reduction of our accounts payable as a result of the Tr Tompkins Trust financing efforts that were both closed in December. Um, as of today, we have not yet mailed out the last remaining $950,000 worth of bills from that category. But when you see December, and you see that, that financing come into place, you'll see that accounts payable line drop right down. Um, <clears throat> other highlights in November, um, not so much on the balance sheet, but you'll see on the income statement in blue, you had the first of several settlements we have made with the uh, finance charges. Um, from all those finance charges that accumulated when we were awaiting financing for both the airport bonds and then the Tompkins, Tompkins Trust financing. So we did have uh, one settlement we produced in May, or May, in November, uh, that resulted in a $48,000 negative adjustment to the expense category. Um, And otherwise, we had a, uh, a positive month not considering depreciation of $35,000 and a year-to-date loss of $78,000 from a cash basis. Are we, uh, do we have all our reimbursement for the grain guns yet? Almost all of it. Almost all of it. Yeah. We've made, we've made several payments and the state has been turning around those grant checks within two weeks. Okay. So it's really a, a nice improvement. So we do have some agency still. like ours. But we we have we're expecting a check any day now. Okay. And if when we receive that check, I think we'll have a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars left of invoices and pay applications to pay. And slightly less than that in reimbursable grant funds still available. Okay. Thank you. So, Jim, as we move through um, 2018, um, one of the things I, I thought about was your predecessor was a CMA, and to me was how you use money. You make money, but how do you use money, whatever. I know we have already had a budget thing, whatever I like to do. I, I would like you as we move through the year to make recommendations as far as certain purchases and things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing even though the will of the board would like to do things whatever so i think we need strength you know from your from you and your department to say this is where we are and this is where you can't go or where you can go and i think that would be very helpful for us to get through this coming year uh, obviously if five ships pulled up whatever and you know obviously the revenue goes where we wanted to go, that'd be something else. But I, I think being fragile, I, I think I would really appreciate the board would too is, is to uh, uh, really advise us as best possible where we're at. I mean, I know we all have a wish list of things that we'd like, but I think we have to really be considerate of how we do things. So okay, and that'll be month to month, whatever you want to do, and mm -hmm. so. I mean, I look at this here, whatever, these are, uh, the, the, you know, your statement is what, what happened from other decisions that have happened in the past. Right. And so we just got to do a little bit better job, you know, to make sure we align ourselves the way we need to. So anything else for Jim? Uh, Jim, the, uh, from the airport, uh, the income statement, 48.9, what does that consist of? 
the other income. Other income, yes. Um, it is a combination of several different line items. Um, the rentals are accounted above. Mm -hmm. The facility fees are accounted above, and the remainder, the forty-eight thousand, is a combination of aviation fuel sales that come through the Volvo accounts. It is passenger fare charges. Is that the right term? Yeah, PFC, PFC charges. They're, okay. they're known as. Um, Parking fees, sorry. I just went through the details and I'm so we don't contemplating breaking those out okay, so separately. That was um, my next question. Why don't we do that so we can see what's Okay. I could I can do that. That would be easier. Because that's a combination of seven or eight different numbers that are seven to ten thousand yeah, dollars in size. Be, it would be or helpful, much less I in think, size. To uh, track parking fees and fuel sales. <coughs> and we have had, as a as a you know result of the the new flights from to Tampa, the parking fees are escalating quite nicely. Good. Good. The um, professional fees, contracting services, again at the airport. Is that uh, Volo and Mapco? That is Volo and Mapco. Um, and the last portion of the interim airport manager's job, there was a little bit of carry crossover with Ron and with uh, Bill McCowan that was still here through okay. third week in November, I think, was his last last week. The other big thing we got running around in that category, too, is NICEARC is in there. Yes, correct. Yeah. Nice arc, Volo, oh, Mapco, the cleaning, cleaning expenses, cleaning expenses, and the interim interim manager. Okay. Thank you. And you already answered that one. I did have a question regarding on the balance sheet. The difference in um, accounts receivable this year and last year we're, we're down. Roughly twenty-four thousand uh, dollars. Any particular reason? Just the way it works. I out? I believe the difference is the collection of a one bill, and I can't remember the company as I sit here, but it was about twenty-three thousand dollars that was well in excess of a year old that was in dispute. Um, working with wait. OMLC and we go. and that was split um, up for your reference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that's the mate, the biggest part of the difference. Um, last year it was still there. This year it's paid, so it's gone. Good. Thank you. What is the system, the toll collecting system? Is it, is it giving us information that we're desiring? Yes. It's working okay. It's good to know. We put a lot of how much we got in it? Six hundred thousand. That ballpark, yes. Yeah, six hundred thousand, and that was a deal. Yes. That was a deal. I mean, there was a, that was a million too, and something like that, whatever. But a question I had, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. When is the border station uh, contract end? I was thinking about that the other day. The border station should be able to, as a unit, be wrapped up and dissolved this year. This should be our last audit of the border station, because the only reason the border is station exists is for the bonds. Right. The bonds will be paid off. So the next agreement between GSA and what used to be the border station should be between GSA and OBPA. We'll just do away with that entity internally. Okay. Current lease is up in September. September? Two thousand okay. Yes. Mm. Thank you. We still in negotiations <coughs> with them? Yes. We're waiting. We haven't really started to negotiate. We disputed the drop in the rental payments that starts in February, from February to September. We're waiting for that response. And whatever the response is, we'll have to react to. And that'll help to dictate the negotiations when it expires in September. Okay. This is the one you recall in previous meetings we've talked about uh, where <coughs> they gave themselves more time to give us an answer uh, through the through the process. 
Are you getting a feeling from this? No, not at all. Not at all? Well, no, it's until we received a letter in February. In terms of the, in terms of our disputing the drop and the domestic payments. Well, how do you communicate on that? How do you, how do you do that? We met here and we toured the facility oh, and had some okay. discussions. And, um, are those people decision makers? Or are they yeah, he's, report people he report is back? assigned to that. Okay. That's his duty. I mean, of course, he has a supervisor and has gone to the supervisor. Our letter has, and he's responding to it on his behalf. Yep. Well, if you can get them back on track where we're supposed to be, where we thought we were going to be at. I might have a Christmas card for you coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then so. Well, work hard on that, John. That's a, that's an important element of what can happen or not happen. So, sure. Is, it, is this delay on your phone? No. No, not at all. Well, well I, think, I think it's business. unusual that we sent them a letter disputing the, the drop. Yeah. I'm, everybody does. Yeah. Maybe John should explain why there was a drop, though. The, the basis of it was the initial contract. To reimburse for payment yeah, of bonds. we agreed to it, but we, you know, after the fact, we, you know, we pointed out reasons why it shouldn't drop. But I mean, we we agreed to it. I mean, not us, but right. when the, when the contract was done years ago. The um, reason for the rent being where it was was the fact they were paying our they were paying our bill to build it. Uh, we agreed to build it to their specifications, and they came up with a figure and they agreed to pay rent. John has been arguing with them, or not arguing with them, <coughs> advising that there's nothing changed except that the building is now paid for, right. but they're still occupying the same space. Right. And the rental that was agreed to, I don't think is fair, period. Just not, it's not close to being fair market rental for that size building and facility. So round numbers, there's $800,000 a year that's represented by debt payments that comes in in revenue, let's just talk about the debt payment portion, that comes in in revenue and then goes out again when we pay the bonds. Now on top of that, there's, that's uh, about 366000 that uh, comes in in terms of the management fee and that's what we're renegotiating going forward. I'm just wondering if there's an additional delay, maybe our congressional representative might be interested in knowing that. We aren't there yet. We're still following the process. It's not okay. unusual for these things to take a year or, you know, in some cases, these supplements that uh, I've dealt with previously, I mean, some of them have taken up to two years just to get through the process. But the contract runs out in September? Yeah. 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 The payments so. decrease February 1, I think, and then only for that short period of time, February to September, then we renegotiate that. So I think it's good that we sent them a letter right. saying we didn't agree with it and since it was signed many things have changed. We've relocated the toll booth, additional expenses <coughs> there with all the people going through, uh, maintenance, a lot of different issues. Good. Good. That brings me to an interesting question here. When we put our budget together, do we put the numbers together based on what we're going to pay from February to September? The budget was put together based only upon the management fee that we would receive, not the debt payment, because the debt payment goes away. So it's cash, cash neutral on that side of things. Yeah, but we're not paying on that anymore. Correct. So it's a wash. Okay. But there's, there's no revenue coming in. Then. Yes, oh. there's revenue coming in, but it's just not the same order of magnitude that it yeah. was before yeah. because the debt payment is. So we. We based our budget on the lower percentage, what we yeah. think is going to happen. April through September's budget, just as <coughs> the lower payment coming in, assuming that we will not get any additional income from that. And then Smart. October through March of 2018 is the same number with an inflation factor yet to be negotiated. Yeah. Not a big number. It probably won't be a big number, but <laughs> probably not. How's that negotiated, Wade? Well, there's a supplement that's um, ultimately there'll be a supplement that's put together. They'll have to prove it on their side. We'll have to prove it on our side. 
Um, those of you that have been on the board for a while, you recall they'll usually try and force us down a broker path. Our answer will be no, uh, because it costs extra money, and uh, we'll get the uh, supplement <coughs> approved and use the <coughs> congressional um, question if and when necessary in the process. But right now okay. we're following the process. Okay. Can I put interest in that when I start thinking about what was going on here? Thank you. Anything else for Jim? Anything else you want to tell us, Jim, where you're at? I'm sorry. No. Unless there's other questions. I think on the last page. On the big report? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we see the, next, the December numbers have been added. Um, and year to date, fiscal year to date. OBPA fiscal year to date. The auto crossings are up just under 8%. All other commercial traffic is up 9.7%. And the total crossings are just over 8% blended for the total crossings. So what I don't have in front of me is the is the revenue side by side. Um, but that 8% increase is probably going to be looking at about an 8% increase in revenues because the toll charges have stayed relatively similar. <coughs> stable from year to year. But we've talked before about the possibility of raising the tolls. We did any background work on that yet? And I know we have not. Okay, thank you. But we will, yes. I, I know. Are better. <laughs> oh, you know, I know you, you yeah. said it might take a year or two years, and I was wondering if we have, if, if we have done any legwork on that to get that in motion. Done. Yeah, we haven't. We've okay. been more focused on uh, keeping the wheels on the bus and putting the uh, airport projects to bed. Take the screen and turn it. Take the screen and turn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the screen on. <laughs> So it was not just information stuff. It told you exactly what the employment numbers at the date, how many people came in, how many people went out. I thought that was uh, nice to read. Yeah, I apologize. I can't rotate this on the screen here. No, All right. Well, why don't you just read them off, wait, if you can, or whatever. Or for where we're we at in November, I guess. So this is all the way through December oh. 2017. Okay. Give us a whole number. So the employments, have we verified this number is correct because this is the third number. Uh, um, this shows 22,993 for outbound employment. Correct. Uh, yeah. And and 21,924 in. Well, you know, Let's I call those the unofficial numbers because we had two different file sources today. That okay, but I mean, we're probably this ballpark plus or minus about okay. 200. So. That was interesting. It was a feature story in Watertown Times um, back in December. And I thought it was quite interesting that they said 43,000 people use the airport. And so we talked about employments because employments is federal FAA reimbursement, or whatever. But I look at these numbers. And uh, we're right on par or just a touch above Watertown, mm -hmm. which is uh, quite impressive. 
quite impressive. I mean, uh, last year at this time, I remember we, of course, we had a short run. We only had, when we got to 10,000 employment, but here we are. We're at, uh, for a whole year, 40, 45,000 people came through the, in and out, came in and out, you know, to use the airport. I think that's a, that's a pretty good number. Now, but I remember the forecast when we, we talked about this airport four years ago was, you know, of that number going to 60, going to 80, you know, and working its way up. If it follows the progression that uh, the forecast tells what's going to happen with the market. So uh, I would say we're on track. I think we're on track exactly what the forecast, they said, 40,000. You know, it would be the first year and there's 44, so it's uh, pretty good, pretty good. Any other comments on the report? <coughs> okay, that was hard to read, but <laughs> I saw the bottom number, that's what mattered the most. Um, credit card activity report. There is not one of those. <coughs> I've lost it, Sam. Hmm? I apologize for that. You lost that? I, can't, I cannot find it. Oh, okay. In my well, I remember the one back in January, we were pretty consistent. Time to this back. Sure. Thank you. Yep. I think we were showing that credit card activity has just steadily improved over time and continues to be very strong. Well, obviously, it's just a customer service. You know, new board members, uh, I'd say new in the last two years, whatever, we didn't have credit cards for a long time here. And there was two parts of it, is obviously customer service, and the other part was uh, it was better for accounting practices and a little more effective way to keep track of, of the money and how it, how it goes. So it's worked out. Uh, next we have marketing, building, occupancy, uh, John, your report? Yeah, building occupancy is unchanged. 91% occupancy in Commerce Park. Some of that's going to be returned to us end of January or February. The short term peace agreement, I've talked to them about renewing, wait to hear back. And I know one other that uh, is going to downsize, but I've also talked to two or three <coughs> others that, that are interested in this space. Yeah. We've already got that covered. Had a good prospect meeting up in Ottawa with a very large company that has software for online retailers. <coughs> had an initial meeting and I'm hoping to follow up with them this month. An existing tenant that wants to expand and take more space significantly, possibly June 1. So that's being worked on. And then two or three other uh, three other companies that are going to need more space during 2018 that I've had conversations with. There's a one-year renewal on the agenda for your consideration for Corning and Building One, and that's a good good renewal to have. I think they had a they had a provision where if they downsized, they would only be charged for the space they need, but I took that out so. I know they've done some they've done some expansions in Canton for warehousing, so it's good to have them for another year. And then there's a kind of a lukewarm prospect for the Wagner Road parcel, but it's really it's it's preliminary at this time. So. Anything else for John? Uh, John Morris, do you have anything you want to no, we talked to some out. Airport activity, I mean, I think we covered that. We finished the year, uh, had to finish the year strong with both uh, both flights uh, in terms of the Florida destinations. The Cape Air had also had another good year. Um, so, yeah, I think heading into heading into 2018, there's certainly, uh, certainly reason for out. <clears throat> One thing uh, that I've just became informed of, I'm out there quite a bit, not as much as Mr. Bagman here and Mr. Doorman. I, we do all that all the time. But one of the things I'm finding out from MAPCO is in the past that we weren't getting any long-term parking. And I think, John, what we need to do is somehow advertise to people 
I don't before they come in or when the baggage area, wherever it wants to be, but the long term parking at this time of year is quite a feature. And the feature is 15 days you sign up and it's six dollars a day. Now for six dollars a day, if you go to a hotel and they drop your car off and a guy takes your car and he goes parks it, you gotta hand him a ten spot, okay, before you start, and then you hand him a ten spot to pick the car up. And I mean that's just the routine and whatever. So for ninety dollars for 15 days, all right? Now, they're gonna take the car, they're gonna park it, store it, and then close the area, and bring it back more. The other day, and I was there, a gentleman with his wife and three kids, and they had all this stuff, whatever, and they said to Kelly, he says, uh, where's, is my car ready? And she says, your car is right there. And, and that was bitter cold. And all the people said, Where, how, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And he says, well, I signed up for Long-term delay parking, whatever. I mean, so I think, John, I think the fundamentals for long-term parking is really one of those things that nobody else has. A valet service that makes sense, whatever. I mean, so I don't know how you want to work it with with Rayanne up there and yourself down here with Kelly. I think that's quite a thing. Now, they're, they're using it. Now, they're talking 40, 50, 60 cars. The other day, they had 11 cars. They had to, you know, go down and get, go down and back, whatever. I said, call me, I'll drive a car for you, but... But I mean, that's just part of the yeah. service. At that, that fact, I think we, we had 71 reservations through December and by roughly about December there 30th. You go. Yeah. Some of those reservations are for in 2018, but sure. already made. Yeah. But that's that's a, a, a certainly an uptick. I think going to the 15th, the majority of those are the 15 day. So I, I think that was a, a good idea to uh, to offer that at a 15-day interval instead of just the 30-day interval. Because a lot of people that are going for 30 days tend to drive and they need to have a car down there unless they have another car. So the 15 days seems to be really good. In fact, a lot of people do it even if they're not staying quite 15 days just because yeah. you're saying, I'll, I'll, I'll pay a little bit more just because it's... I'll pay the $90, dollars yeah. 10, $10 yeah. a day or $11 yeah. a day, I'm going to be there and I get a, a warm car waiting for me. Yeah, <laughs> public loves it. Yeah, absolutely. Where are the cars stored? Down in the port, one of the port buildings. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. So it does involve some shuttling of vehicles back and forth, obviously. Um, but no, it, it, it's, been, it's been well received. And certainly for the winter we've had, uh, it should be. You know, people are definitely, uh, they're always coming back wondering if we can jump them. You know, so other people just want to be able to come back and, and get in a car and go. So, yeah, it's a nice yeah. feature. <coughs> Uh, the other thing I mentioned to Wade one day, local, it just happened today at lunchtime that I ran into this gentleman again. Uh, local businessman, Cape Air, uh, canceled a flight one night. So they, they brought him from Albany up here. Got here at midnight, dropped him off at the airport. We got to have something someplace out there, show him to the other side where two Canadians were standing there. and. This local businessman ended up taking him to a local hotel. But we need some type of something in a window, something <clears throat> on the, whatever, with taxi numbers and maybe some hotel numbers, local hotel numbers. Because these guys were, you know, okay. I, I don't know what happened with their connection to Canada, whatever, but, uh, you know, it didn't get in here until midnight, and that's where, where they brought him was right to the airport. So if we could come up with, with something, you know, Letting the people know, you know. Well, it's on one of the screens, isn't it? In the well, back yeah, but the airport, they're lo it's locked, so well, they probably can't get. They probably can't get in. So that's what, we might that's need what to have saying. That's what they're saying. So in the other area, they need to. Okay. Yeah. Isn't there uh, Uber available now? I'm sorry. Uber available now here? Yeah, there's Uber. Uber and Lyft is available. Um, I'll address this with Cape Air tomorrow in the irregular operations plan um, that Cape Air has for the pastors because it, it sounds like they're just missing a step in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'll make mention of it to them right. more. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes, go ahead, Sam. Uh, that one hangar has been, uh, the hangar has been empty for a while now. I have no idea how we advertise, how to let that be known. Is there any market out there for tea hangers in our area? Bolo handles. Oh, Bolo handles. Are they doing anything about it? Need to probably ask them some. I think. If you would, I will do so. 
Are you talking about the one that the Cape Air uses? No. No. The T hangers? The smaller ones. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's not a lot of money per se, but still, it'd be nice to have that additional money. Yes. Forget the exact amount. It's like 140 a month, something like that. It's somewhere in that ballpark. They're not heated, are they? I was going to say, that's a nice room for somebody. <laughs> 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 if it was even. Put a little cot in there. If you see lights on, say we got a problem. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Um, okay, I guess we're into business items. Uh, wait, take us. So for uh, business items, again, because this is the annual meeting, there's a couple of uh, routine things that we need to do. And the first is approval of state mandated officer appointment. Um, I will point out one thing on this on this list for the contracting officer, the executive director, uh, Office of Preve Prevention and Domestic Violence liaison, the executive director. The internal control officer is left blank and pulled out as a separate resolution that follows. The MWBE officer would be the CFO, the ethics officer, the executive director, data coordinator, the CFO. Records Access Officer, the Senior Administrative Assistant, and the Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business Officer would be the CFO. So moved. I'll second that. Any questions, comments? Um, let me ask this question because is there any office out there that's mandated for office appointments that we don't have listed here? This is all of them that are known at this point. If there are others, uh, generally myself and the CFO trade off, and who gets what next? Okay. <laughs> okay. You flip a coin and <laughs> the two-headed coin is helping you. <laughs> okay. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Lamarca? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Approved. Agenda item 1A is approval of appointment of an internal control officer. We're required by the Internal Control Act to have one and um, that that person be appointed, yet we do not have one uh, since the retirement of uh, Mr. Morrill in April of 2017. As we don't have a, a path forward on this one at the present time, I recommend this be uh, tabled and dealt with under unfinished business. I'll second it. Are, do we have a possible path forward with this? I know we've been struggling with this. Not at this time, unless, Mr. Fellow, you have any update from anything relative to discussions on this topic? Unless we can find a human body. Contracting the outside? I thought maybe you go into a CPA firm, see if you can contract with them. They're, this is for financial purposes, what the honor's for. I don't know if he'd be interested, but uh, we had a former CP on our board. Mm -hmm. You know, he's retired. I don't know if he's still on the state, uh, the county board of legislators. Yes. But, it, yes, it, yes. but this would not be that kind of conflict. The conflict was he couldn't sit in his board. Uh, maybe, maybe Mr. Hooper would be interested because he is retired from his uh, CPA yep. job. Uh, I, I have asked him about other capacities, whatever he is willing to. To help out in whatever capacity he can. My recollection for the years that he was on the board with us, Don would review the books uh, yep. like they're asking you to do now and make sure they were in order and stuff. He would ask the questions before I got to the board meeting. So he'd be a perfect, in my opinion, perfect candidate okay. if he's willing to do it. Any objection if I open discussions along those fronts? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Saying nodding of heads, so go ahead and do that. I think he flies out. What did he tell us? What day he's flying? I just Thursday. saw him last night. So Thursday. <laughs> yes. We talked to him last night. So, so I think he's he flying out area. Thursday. Is it this Thursday he's flying back? I think so. Uh, yes. No, or the next Thursday. You know, another week, 10 days, if we can get him to do it, we'd be in much better shape because he's got a, a, a resume that would satisfy anybody at the state level. Because he was an auditor and all that stuff to begin with, with his, yeah, when he was a CPA, yeah. so it fits in. And if and if he will do it, then maybe contracting with a CPA firm providing auditors that kind of auditor services. Yeah. Uh, 
since we can't seem to find a, a person that's willing to take the job internally, we have to create another position, which at this point may be more than we want to bite off at this point uh, with our lean budget the way it is. That's all. I, I, I would think that's a great idea to do that. Do the board agree with that? Yes. Okay. No, it's all done. You got both. Yeah, it's all yeah. done. Okay. Yeah. So we can move right on to the separate handout, which is agenda. No, I, do we vote on that? No. No, no, no we sorry. didn't vote on it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now for agenda item A3, this is a settlement of litigation. Uh, it's a settlement and uh, mutual release agreement that was negotiated by council between Marine Building Contractors and the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority. The terms are spelled out in items one through four, and the details of the agreement are listed under Exhibit A. Wait, did you mean to skip over the approval of the standards? No, I didn't, actually. Sorry about that. I don't have a problem going out of order. I just want to make sure we didn't miss that. So let's, let's back up then. My apologies. So one of the other routine things that we do each year is we do approval of a standard workday uh, reporting. And that makes sure certain that uh, everybody we have here is uh, basically we don't have any phantom jobs here or things of that nature. So regulation 315.4 of the New York State Office of the State Controller requires the public authority to file a standard workday and reporting report to the office of the OSC on an annual basis. You'll typically see these posted outside our, our boardroom for the 30 day period that's required. Um, all appointed officials at the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority will be reported as working eight hours per day, 40 hours per week, and five-day work week with terms ending on January 31st of the following year. And that's a requirement of the policy. Um, with, when you have an eight-hour day, does that give you flexibility certain in summertime work at seven in the morning and other times at eight? Uh, the work day can be adjusted with the approval of the executive director. Okay, yes. so it gives you flexibility. It's not the time, it's the number of hours you work. Correct. Okay. Are you getting your eight hours in? Absolutely. <laughs> um, nights and weekends. <laughs> nice and 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 <laughs> you name it. <laughs> so moved. So moved. Okay. I'll second it. Any further questions? Quick call or all, please. Mr. Laughlin? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitney? Yes. Mr. Alonso? Yes. Okay, next up, I apologize, is agenda item A3, as previously stated. This is settlement of litigation between the Bridge and Port Authority and Renee Building Contractors Incorporated. I'll hold it. A second. Any questions and comments? I have a few questions. Okay. Um, Frank, on the application for a waiver of MWBE participation goal, under Section 2, type of MWBE waiver requested, way over to the right, it says 6.7%. I don't have that in front of me, so. Is that instead of 30%? That would have been instead of 30%. That's where we got into the rule about not meeting his goal. Of the goal? The goal was set by the governor, right. and it's part of our contract, right. and our policy is part of the contract. So Mernane filed this. This is what he would have, I think, is what he's, his goal that he met out of the 30%. That was my question. He met 6.7 out of 30. Well, I, I, well I, go ahead, Sam. I know you want your well, question. That, I saw the 6.7%, and I didn't know if that was a, 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 a
partial waiver. I didn't know if that was down from the 30 percent <coughs> no. or if that's the goal they we, we never, re the amount of the waiver never varied from the contract. Unfortunately, being as understaffed as we are and watching a contract that's probably a half a foot thick, yeah, things like this, you don't see them to the end. And it came up at the end. And it also came up at a very bad time for the authority from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. So we went through the process. Uh, they filed a, a, a humongous uh, waiver application and stuff and, and went before board and the board sided with them partially, sided with us partially. That's how it went from over 600,000 to 400,000. That's the first I've seen that number. That's the the yeah. trouble and the reason why I recommended the settlement was approximately $150,000 worth of interest that we owe by contract, because all of our contracts now and should not in the future have 9% as a statutory amount, which is what the state puts in for judgments. It shouldn't be in our contract. We should have something based upon like the federal system. Federal Reserve note, short term, 30 days, 60 days, whatever you want to pick. But not that. That's an artificially high amount. But we signed the contract too. We were stuck with it. Then my estimation would have cost for us to litigate somewhere between fifteen and hundred thousand dollars. So now we're talking another quarter million dollars. To and in the back of my mind after doing the research of prior cases that talked about liquidated damages. The only positive thing about our contract is we had a formula come up with liquidated damages. But if, they, if the judge says, what did the authority suffer? Nothing. We didn't suffer any loss. And it's somehow they've got to correct how they come up with these, uh, this particular formula, statute, and what they want to do so that you can have something in it. But courts are not going to give us something because something artificial wasn't met. Now up until this past 18 months, you could ask for a waiver just about anything and it's just automatic. But that's not what we were told uh, when it went down. I mean, we had some good points, but the bad points would, to me would be we don't have the money to pay the interest and fight it. And secondly, uh, there's no way to hell that anybody could show that we actually suffered any damage because of the lack of minority. Now, did minority contractors suffer damage? Yes, because they didn't get an opportunity to participate. That's on the contractor. But the problem is, they're not going to get anything, any of the benefit. It's not like we're going to turn around and, and if we get, say, $400,000, we're going to send it to minority contractors because there are none, except the ones who were listed. So I, I, it's a hell of a catch-22. Yeah, I, I don't say I'm confused, but to me, is when I, when I think back when we started this process and how we recorded it and how we averaged out whatever I want to be. And it was, to me was, I had asked uh, Fred, I said, Where, what percentage were you at? And at that time, we had to get, I think we started at 15. Didn't we start at 15 or we were at 20? No, 15. We tried a 30 wide percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it went up over the years. Right, but I'm just saying we started off whatever it be, and so we were trying to negotiate contracts and do these type of things to get the numbers up, whatever. I mean, and so the question I always ask is, is it a cumulative number or every contract? So in other words, it's $400,000, okay, whatever, and they just say you do $5 million worth of, uh, of MWE at 30% or 40%, what does, and you only get 6% here, does that make you at fault here because you didn't get your 30%? And I think that rule is kind of confusing. What they calculate that on is based upon all of our projects, be it construction or purchases, lumped together. The trouble is the dollar amount. Dollar amount's high for projects. Yeah. And when you get try to get the 30% of the dollar amount, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> We've been lucky in some respects where some of our bigger t ticket items, like our insurance, issue an MWBE company. And I forgot what we pay, but it's a pretty good chunk of change every year. <clears throat> so if, if I asked Jim what's the percentage before this, right, what's your MWE percentage of they have before this, now we, now we have this, now then what's the percentage? 
I mean, do you, I mean, second quarter report, <coughs> we were slightly over 30%. Okay, we'll call it, 30, 30, we'll call it 31 percent or 33. Third quarter report is due next week. <coughs> okay. And this will be in it? No. You're mixing apples and oranges here because okay. there's one MWBE is based on two things. There's an MWBE component on all contracts that deal with state money right. when you're building something. And separate and apart from that, there is an MWBE component on the discretionary spend that the authority does. So there's really two, there's two different, uh, two different numbers there. There's one calculation at the end of the day that Jim's referencing. But to get to your, to get to your question, that number is calculated based on cash payments to MWBE firms within the given quarter. It's mm -hmm. not what we owed and haven't paid. It's not. Uh, there's a lot of things that it's not. Okay. Does so that make I, sense? So, yeah. So if I ask you in February, you can give me a percentage number. Through December, yes. No, February. I just say no. the end of February. No. When we get there, I can ask. I said, Jim, what's, what, what's our MW percentage? At the end of February, I'll be able to give you the first three quarters of okay. 2017. Okay. So we'll ask you. We'll ask you that. Remind me. <laughs> Let's do better than that. Let's put it right as a standing item on the finance committee agenda. It's something that it we track every day, every month. <coughs> uh, once a quarter. But we, we used to have somebody trying to work out on a regular basis because we were so far behind. Uh, and to your point, Frank, that's where the authority fell behind. The MWBE coordinator at that point, uh, the contract was out of compliance for about a two month span. And one month into it, our person caught it. So it was actually, that's where the delay came our, from. Our problem is we don't have enough people. Have you ever looked at those contracts? Oh. We don't have enough people to sit there and thumb through it. We don't have the extra bodies in Jim's, in Jim's offset there. Hey, play with this contract for a while and see where, see where we're falling short. I mean, it just, I know it's not a good argument when you meet with the state because they have high lofty goals. But they have a lot of people working for them. Well, we, we want to meet our goals. Right? I mean, that's no question about it. We do the best we can. You right. never, you're never always going to meet your goal. Well, true. Yeah. I think a very important distinction here, too, is this is settlement of litigation. Yes, correct. This yeah. is not MWBE reporting. Two different Notice reports. the claim no, has been filed. Six percent is up. But, if I read this and correct me, if we approve this, then we're also going along with our application for a waiver. Correct. No. No. We just settled. We just settled. No. The read paragraph two, page one or two. I took out the language that you wanted. It's uh, page two. It just says, upon execution of this agreement, the OBPA and Murnane have resolved any and all pending disputes regarding MWBE requirements in the contract, including the issue of liquidated damages to their mutual satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Page two of the contract, of the, the so settlement agreement. Settlement, settlement agreement. Settlement agreement. Not the... Not that. What's this, Sam? This is a... Uh, A3. What is it? Is that our... It's a separate one. Separate handout. Uh, uh, so that seven. was taken out. You took that out. Yeah. I took out the reference to that. That doesn't mean we didn't resolve it favorably. Okay. We didn't resolve it unfavorably. We just didn't resolve it. But based upon current financial issues that we have, we feel it's better to settle than to okay. litigate. Okay. Uh, what does Mr. Manane, what does he have to do now? As soon as somebody signs the agreement, I'm going to email it when I get back to my office down to his uh, attorney. Okay. I'm going to request that it's going to be there. I, Jim says we have the money to make the payment. That I'm going to have them email me back a copy, but I want an originally signed copy. That's why I got three or four copies here. I will send her an original copy tomorrow morning in the mail uh, and ask her, because they can be signed in counterparts according to the next to the last paragraph or last paragraph, so that we have whoever signs it here, which is going to be you, Sam, and Mernane sign it here, that we've got an original, it's, it's an original document. And that we're going to put in the arc. It's not going to go in the vault unless we have a separate folder where somebody can find it. Okay, so now we're in the resolution. That, does it say that we agree with a waiver of 6.7%? That's correct. Okay. All right. Tell you the truth, until you pointed it out, I wouldn't even, didn't know that percentage existed. Mm, me either, and I would have voted no. 
Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more questions, Colonel? Uh, Mr. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Lamacho? Yes. And Mr. Lockwood? Yes. Sam, I'll get your signature yes. forward now. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is uh, agenda item B1. This is approval of supplement number four with Corning Incorporated at the rates, terms, and the conditions you see before. So moved. I'll second. 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 Any questions, comments? I'd like to point out, though, that this, this new lease can, does contain the clause with regard, that's required by uh, our dealing financial dealings with Tompkins, uh, except for one provision that they objected to was the $1,000 day penalty. They didn't do it. We, I think we can still take that out because it provides that we have the authority as their designated attorney, in fact, to sign for them if they won't sign within 10 days. And John's going to put it in all future leases as they come up to be renewed. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Alonso? Yes. Mr. Rothler? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Passes. Next item up is agenda item C1. This is a promissory <coughs> approval of promissory note with uh, Metro Auto Parts. Term of the note is 120 months, expiring November 30th, 2026. At the rates, terms, and conditions you see before you for the um, toll system at the uh, airport. Is this for the equipment? Yes. The equipment and the installation, yes. This include updates, software All updates? Yes. No, it does not. This is strictly just the installation of the equipment. So, so at some point in the future, there would be some kind of maintenance contract needed. More than likely. Now, if I remember right, we talked about uh, updates uh, as it moves forward. Who's responsible for that? Uh, we are the owner of the system, and MAPCO is our agent out there, and ATI is uh, the equipment installer. Mm -hmm. So that's the description of parties. Yeah, so if there's a software update. So if there's a software update, and at some point in the, the future, there is a charge for that. That charge goes to MAPCO, which goes to us. It's no different than, um, by comparison, our e-transit system works the same way. Do we have to pay for any updates? Yes. Is, this is the same situation we were in when we built that parking lot. Am yes. I right? This is correct. This 350000 yes. for the equipment. Yes. This was uh, done through a competitive bid. Um, <coughs> the, everything was uh, eyes out and T's crossed on that. We're playing catch up on paperwork now. Not to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't um, wasn't the contract with Mapco signed two years ago? Uh, it would have been. I don't know the exact date, but yeah, you're you're in that ballpark. You're you're correct. Yeah, October of sixteen. October of sixteen, yes. We haven't been paying on that. That's correct. Mapco has sort of helped us out. Mapco is our agent has helped us through this process. Learning all kinds of things. Um. I do want to respond, if I may, again, not being adversarial, but this has been disclosed to the board. This has been discussed in executive session, and there should be no surprises with respect to this. But it's no so surprise to me. Thank you for bringing that up. But my concern is, is just like the other day, we had a, a problem with the lift gate. Who's responsible to fix that, MAPCO or us? Well, right now, if we need service, we have to go to ATI and ATI will not perform service for us because they have not been paid. Right. They have not been paid because the MAPCO promissory note has not been paid. So we jerry-rig it as best we can. 
replace what switches that we can and uh, get it working. We have talked about that. that is no, I, I'm, yes. <coughs> no, 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 I'm not saying I like it, but I'm just saying that we have talked about. But yes, we have. I, I still, Don, you bring up a good point. So sometimes it doesn't work. So who pays for any repairs? Who pays for any malfunction of the equipment? I don't think it should be us. Well, at the end of the day, it's our equipment. Any way you look at it, it's our equipment. Yeah. Is there any other? Is there any other company that can service this? I mean, it's this quite is, evident. It's not as proprietary as. I'll give an example. Our e-transit system out here is very proprietary. Nobody else could maintain it other than e-transit. Okay. Um, the ATI system is much less unique in in my opinion and based on my understanding of it um, but there are proprietary components to it that would make it difficult if uh, let's say if we decided tomorrow to never deal with ATI again I don't think that would be possible or feasible based on the proprietary nature of the equipment of some components of the equipment out there so we've got to pay this 350 before AT and I gets gets paid yes that's correct uh, MAPCO has fronted the additional monies, and right now there's an outstanding bill of 121000 I believe, between MAPCO and ATI. So, anything that happens with that equipment out there at the present time, we don't, we don't have access to parts for that then? That's correct. So we've been on borrowed time until ATI uh, receives payment. Once they're we approve this and we go to ATI and pay them, do they have a service contract system? Yes. And we would buy that. Well, right now we I wouldn't recommend buying anything right now. Well, I'm just so saying, we but they, would be the, they would be the company that we would look forward to. But yes. Okay. So. Yeah, if there are any updates, ATI is who we yeah. have to go to. Right. Just like we have to go to E-Transit uh, e for the toll booth. The MAPCO the has extensive experience with this type of equipment. Right? Yes, they do. Or did they say this was a little bit different than what they run in Rochester? That's where the little bit of uh, proprietary nature of this ATI equipment comes in. It's similar to what they use in other locations, but it's not exact. What are the references for <coughs> the interest rate is uh, the OVPA's bond rate? Yes, that's R correct. Roughly what area is that now? Um, is the bond rate, I believe, was 5.33%, which is reflective of the promissory note. Okay. You can pay this off early if you wanted to. I think the document says no one lists the holder. Gives permission. I believe that's correct. Mm -hmm. A little strong arm. <laughs> well, that's something nice problem to have. Uh, I can't remember. Do we get a motion for that? Yeah. Okay. Um, the motion? I'll, I'll move it. I'll second. Any further questions, comments? Well, I, I guess the only thing is you, you buy something, you hope, Doug, and your comment is it's good stuff that lasts, it lasts the length of your, <coughs> of your note here that they, don't, they still have something working, whatever. I, I've seen this system in a lot of parking lots, a lot of garages and stuff, so it's not a... It may not be a Cadillac, but a lot of people are using it. So I, do, I would say, you know, you're sick of things at parts. You know, 10 years from now, where are the parts? I think this is a widely used system. Oh. Parts and stuff be available to, to use. I guess my frustration level is, uh, you know, we got, we got a ton of money tied up in that place out there. And it seems like every other day there's a problem and it's going to cost us money. Uh, and, that, and that's part of doing business out there. But to me, this is a customer service that we really need. I mean, 
we can't we can't hope that every time we have a storm where it gets it gets real cold and then things don't work and we need a part and we can't get a part and I don't know it's it's well, I think they, it's they a, to a, me it's a priority yeah. well, it's one have, of the priorities yeah. well one of the but. things that they have out there they have a swipe system on the phone card whatever they can swipe the thing I mean there's other alternatives if it doesn't work whatever there's no way there's backup uh, backup systems that you know at least you're gonna Pull the gate up, and people come in, and they charge, they're going to be charged on the way out. So we already had that problem. And that's how we resolved it. And in addition, I don't know if it sets your mind at ease at all. But in addition to the um, some of the parts that we have on site uh, to repair some simple things, um, the nearest spare part is in Albany at the end of a Cape Air flight. So it's not like it's days and days before we can yeah. get, a, get a part. Well, so. wasn't the initial warranty only one year? I believe so, on the original contract. The original contract when we first purchased it, so that would have expired already. It's yeah. been in use since we opened the airport. So yeah, because that actually came online ahead of the airport. I believe <coughs> it was open in September. Yeah. Of, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's not unusual for those to be short, and it's just like when you buy a computer system or something. After it goes out of its warranty, then they start to fall apart. But this is a lot better built than most computers. Well, you probably want a canopy for the thing, a better canopy around the system. If, you know, Keep the wet. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's another thing to look at as, as we move forward. But. Well, if they're positioned, depending upon where most of our weather comes from, you know, in the uh, northwest, and didn't we have a problem out there with that? Uh, we had a problem with uh, snow getting into one of the machines here a couple months ago, and... Uh, Recently, we had a, there was a limit switch on the, as you drive in, the right-hand gate uh, went up on it. You had to replace that. Yeah. It, it just bothers me that part of the original agreement didn't include updates as we move ahead. To me, that's, that's standard, which should happen in the initial contract, because anything that has electronic equipment now has software updates, period. Actually, I don't disagree with you, but with the nature of the contracts for the e-transit system and for toll systems and things, that's they don't do that. They don't include that. Yeah, because they make more money off. You're that. correct. Yeah, you're correct. Ask Microsoft that time. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. And they keep you keep <laughs> on coming. They <laughs> feed me, feed me. That's why like Bill Gates has so much no. money. Do, do we have a timetable when this this is going to be uh, taken care of? This built. Do we have any uh, projections? Or? Well, when we uh, when we sign this, we go ahead and we notify MAPCO that the promissory note's been signed. Then they go ahead and do their thing with ATI, and then uh, there is a payment on our side of things that needs to be made as well. Okay. So yeah, there's a process there. Anything else? Are you okay? Quick roll roll, please. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lockley? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Approved. The other item relating to MAPCO that we had holding is the approval of the MOU with, uh, with MAPCO. That's agenda item C2. Um, when uh, the board approved the April 8, 2016 meeting with uh, MAPCO, um, to manage and operate the parking facilities. There's one thing that was missed in there, and that was um, their date and our fiscal year do not align. And so what this MOU does, it aligns the contract date with our fiscal year. So it makes it better for reporting purposes and a variety of other things. Does this extend the contract an additional year? You know, a couple of months, only to uh, align it correctly. I think it was an administrative oversight in the contract. It wasn't done in the first place. So if we, if we approve the original contract on April 8th, now we're sending it to April 1 of 2017. Am I reading that right? Yeah, the original contract started October 1, 2016, and our fiscal year starts in April. Oh. We approved the contract in April, but it didn't start until October? 
Am I looking at that? That's correct. Right? Start date of the parking management contract started October 1, 2016. So we actually are moving it. You're moving it from October to April to align with our fiscal year. And that's just making it easier for us, right, Jim? And considering we just took care of the previous resolution, I'll move the resolution next year. Please thank you. Second. Second. Any questions, comments? Can we call the roll, please? Mr. Lamacha? Yes. Mr. Lawford? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Thank you. There are no other such matters uh, for the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority uh, meeting. So we have D1. There's one, there's agenda item B. Suspension. D1. That uh, should go through Finance Committee first. Okay. I apologize, we didn't have a Finance Committee meeting. Um, if you would like to, I suppose we can take it, uh, take it up here at the board meeting. So, uh, agenda item D1 is approval of the suspension of the OBPA prompt payment policy. Four times in 2016 and uh, 2017, the authority uh, suspended the prompt payment policy. Um, we're requesting an additional 120-day temporary suspension of the policy uh, due to the severe cash crunch. Uh, Canadian exchange rate increases the expense of the airport and seasonality of business at the port. Oh, it's interesting, you have 120 days. Are you trying to take this to April 1st? No, not really. I mean, it's just, to it's just every so often we do it, and in housekeeping, we okay. re realized we hadn't done it in a while. Okay. So what would happen after 120 days? We'd have to... We'd have to have another policy. Another policy. Okay. It'd be back before the board, just like this one is. Okay. okay. I'll move that. That's not good. Thank you. Let's see how you're studying here. <laughs> any, any further questions, comments? Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Laughlin? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitney? Yes. Mr. Lamacher? Yes. Approved. Okay, then we, we got to go to next meeting date. February 5th, okay, everybody? 3 o'clock or 3 30? I mean, it's a moving target. 3 30, better, better, better. Not so, you Constitution. 3 30, better. I just asked her if she could do a 6. <laughs> yeah, the 5th. 6 p.m. No, 6 p.m. Uh, no, not on the 5th. What's the 5th? Never mind. Is that a Monday? Yeah, it's a Monday. Are we going to Monday meetings now? Uh, we're talking about trying to avoid the Allegiant flight days, so that way we can have the airport uh, and uh, other folks represented here. Who's your board meetings? I guess it's kind of like that. Is that the choose between one or the other? <laughs> Time? Do you want to go to, you want to go up one more day, Sam? Or no, 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 no. I, I'm fine with uh, the, fifth? the fifth. Okay. Yeah, I'm in court all day. And then I have night court at night. So, no. <laughs> 3.30? No good? No. Oh. She's got between 5.30 and 6 o'clock, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I have to get here. Tell her it is 5.30. <laughs> and long with the people like me, it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> There's just no time sometimes. No good time. Good day. Okay, I guess we'll go for February 5th. Maybe we get uh, James here or whatever. Chris is okay with you at that time? Mm -hmm. 3 o'clock or 3.30 for you, Chris? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Be what better for you, Chris? It, it really doesn't matter. I, I have the the issue with me is the length of time, okay. not when. Yeah. Uh, starting at, at three o'clock. 
Requested by Go Solar. I will send my motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, the motion to executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Action, Mr. Davis. Uh, no, sir. The only thing is, uh, for next time, there will uh, be an agreement on the uh, docket for the board relative to uh, gross sold. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, no other business, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned.